Dr. Eric Pappas. How is everybody? Good. Um, no, this is not the middle school graduation. I know I didn't grow after middle school, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, graduates, family members, and staff, I am truly humbled by the opportunity to speak at the 2017 graduation ceremony at Ichabod Crane High School. Uh, traditionally, I could give advice for how to handle the next chapter in life, but personally, I've never found these speeches interesting, nor have I remembered them for more than a few weeks. So instead, I have decided to take this time to speak about the history of the LGBT plus community. Thank you. And I chose to do this because the history of the LGBT plus community is oftentimes neglected by state curriculums. Education to me has always been about learning the full truth about a topic. I believe that not providing an adequate education on this subject is an insult to the values of educational facilities. Our history is one of empowerment, courage, and bravery. And I hope by the end of the speech, you will also feel empowered to stand up for what you believe in. <coughs> for most of US history, homosexuality has been criminalized. Gay people were prevented from employment in the federal government under Dwight Eisenhower. Homosexuality was listed as a sociopathic personality disturbance by the American Psychiatric Association in 1952. And it was not until 1961 when Illinois became the first state to decriminalize homosexuality. After World War II, there was a desire to return to pre-war norms. This gave rise to the Second Red Scare, a time period from 1947 to 1957 where even the claim of being a communist could mean losing your a job or li and livelihood. Along with communism, there was also a fear of anything different or un-American. This included homosexuality. The fear of gay people at this time led to what is known as the Lavender Scare, a witch hunt and mass firing of gay people from the U.S. government, including the military. Both homosexuality and communism were see as some, seen as subversive elements of American society. They were both seen as a rejection of the standard middle-class lifestyle most people sought. McCarthy saw both of these as a threat to American life. As a result of this scare, gay people were expelled from universities. Cities outlawed wearing opposite gender clothes, and many gay people were forced to live a double life in order to maintain employment and avoid jail. In order to change the current situation, many organizations started to organize secretly to try to shift society's view of gay people. As time went on, these organizations, originally kept underground, became more public. In 1965, Frank Kameny, who had been fired from the U.S. Army because he was gay, led a picket on the White House to protest employee discrimination. This was one of the first public protests, and it became a trailblazer for future riots to come. He was inspired by the Civil Rights Movement, which would only grow throughout the 1960s. In 1969, the Stonewall Riots took place in Greenwich Village, a Manhattan neighborhood which was home to a large gay population since the end of World War I. The anti-gay sentiment of the 1950s had sparked a cultural revolution in Greenwich, and the residents had become more and more open and unapologetic about their identities. The Stonewall Inn was a gay bar in Greenwich. On June 28, 1969, Stonewall was raided by local police. This was not uncommon, but it was this day that the people of Stonewall decided to fight back. People refused to provide their IDs, and soon violence broke out in the streets. More people joined, and soon thousands of people joined the riot. After several nights of protesting, the violence died down. But these protests marked the major turning point that brought the LGBT plus community out of hiding. Weeks after the riot, village residents organized groups to establish places where gays and lesbians could open up about their sexual orientation without fear of being arrested. The many gay liberation groups that immediately followed the Stonewall riots were known as the Gay Liberation Front. Two major figures in this movement were Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Marsha was a gay liberation activist, and she, along with Sylvia, started an organization called STAR, or Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, in 1970. They created STAR House, a shelter for homeless drag queens and runaways. Even as people who are often homeless themselves, they still found a way to help others. Marsha would continue as an activist for the LGBT plus community until her death in 1992. Sylvia continued to fight as well, especially for those who were left behind by mainstream society. Even on her deathbed, she was fighting for the rights of trans inclusion in a gay organization. Sylvia and Marsha's spirit, as well as the many others who fought for gay rights, 
carries on with us today. The reason gay pride parades take place at the end of June is in order to commemorate the Stonewall riots. And now many of you are probably wondering why I took this time to tell you about something that has so little to do with graduation. However, the message that I was trying to get across is about education. I hope each of my classmates feels like they have a right to be heard and to stand up for that in which they believe. That we can go out in the world where we live, where we can live a life without regrets, without wishing we had not voiced our opinion or rebelled against the status quo. So many of us go through life without questioning or trying to understand the complex social structures around us. And I believe it is time to change that. Go out and listen to other people. Understand how they view the world and more importantly, why they would view it that way and challenge your own opinions through educating yourself. Understand that most of what you will learn will be outside of high school and there's nothing wrong with that. The most important thing high school has taught me was how to learn and how to think for myself. And that's a message I would like to share with all of you. Educate yourself, never stop learning, never stop growing. I hope this speech bolsters a reaffirmation to stand up for that in which you believe and for the people you love. After all, isn't that what graduation should be all about? empowerment. Thank you to all of you for listening and best of luck to the class of 2017. Thank you, Eric. I would like to now introduce to you class valedictorian, Miss Alexis Hoffman. Good evening, everyone. Um, first off, I'd like to apologize. I became sick this week, so if I cough, bear with me. Most graduation speeches begin with an inspirational quote. Thank you. Most graduation speeches begin with an inspirational quote, a little precursor to the profound message to follow. I would like to start mine with a complaint. A complaint that I am giving up my habitual relaxing Friday night to give this speech. I would also like to start with gratitude. I would like to express my gratitude to the teachers and administrators of Ichabod Crane for not just the honor of standing up here tonight, but also for the outstanding education they have provided. They understand that education is not just facts and figures, but also the passing of values such as scholarship, compassion, and loyalty from one generation to the next. As most of you know, Columbia County is not exactly full of excitement. As any good upstate New Yorker will tell you, this is not New York City. To my classmates behind me, you all understand what it means to live in a small town, whether you grew up here like me or only arrived recently. We live in a world where everyone knows everyone, and if you don't know someone, the odds are that someone you know does. We live in a world of small businesses and family farms. However, this is beside the point. The point is that our world is about to get a lot bigger. Some of us are moving on to different towns, counties, states, and even countries. We are leaving behind the quiet and safety of Columbia County for new destinations. And for those of us staying, we're moving on to new chapters in our lives. In terms of legality, we are all adults now. There's no avoiding it, it's too late. We might not be done growing, but we've made it this far. I'm not going to tell you to be brave or diligent. We are standing here tonight because we have already proved that we can work hard and that we can be courageous. We must continue to be so, but I have faith in us. We have all survived high school, not to mention middle school. I have no doubt that as long as we try, we cannot just survive life's trials, but we can thrive. I'm not worried about our chances of success. Personally, I'm worried about the world. Our world is getting bigger. We're 
we're going to be exposed to new people, ideas, and places. Influential horror fiction writer H.P. Lovecraft once postulated, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Well, guess what? We're heading into the unknown. Whether it is the unknown of adulthood, the unknown of a location, or the unknown of a person, we cannot avoid the unknown. It will always come for us. We have received the counsel of many about our lives to come after this ceremony. This is all well and good, particularly in terms of things like taxes and colleagues. But we must remember that this advice doesn't banish the unknown. Your story will be very different from that of the person giving the advice. It already is. All the parables in the world cannot prevent the unknown from finding you. Someday, you are going to meet someone or something or be somewhere that is unknown. After filming Captain Phillips, award-winning actor Tom Hanks developed his own concept of heroism, and he mused that a hero is someone who voluntarily walks into the unknown. I don't expect heroics from us in the typical sense, but I hope that we will greet the unknown instead of running from it. When the unknown approaches you, say hello to him or her. I'm not going to gender a concept. When he or she presents you with something different, don't panic. Different is not synonymous with dangerous. Be cautious, perhaps, but do not run away. What is new does not have to stay new. Think of it this way. Your best friend was once your new friend. That scary looking different thing might not be so scary after all. But if you flee, you will never know how wonderful it could have been. When you visit a new place where the people speak a different language or dress in different fabrics, you may wish to cling to your safe and familiar habits, but I challenge you to jump. Jump into the culture and explore. Jump into conversations and try to learn the language, even just a few basic phrases. Jump at the chance to meet the unknown. When you meet someone whose values differ from yours or whose origins are foreign to you, leap into learning about him or her. Leap into asking why, where, when, what, and how. Jump into knowing what was previously unknown. Albert Einstein, the genius behind modern theoretical physics, once said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. That is what I seek. I seek for all of us and everyone to be passionately curious. I wish for us to cast aside the fear of the unknown and be curious. My hope is for us to seek out what is different and more than that, to seek to understand it. Everyone knows the phrase, curiosity killed the cat, but fewer people are aware of the rest of the line. Satisfaction brought it back. The question becomes, how does one find satisfaction without curiosity? How does one find answers without first asking questions? The pioneer of animation in the film industry, Walt Disney, once asserted, we keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. So yes, we do fear the unknown, but conversely, we also crave it. Humanity has achieved so much. We have literally reached for the stars. Those innovators who sought to discover both how the world works and how to change how it works were driven by curiosity. They jumped into the unknown world and found their satisfaction. Our expanding realm is unknown, but instead of putting up barriers, whether they are made of thoughts or of brick, let us go out into this world. Let us explore. Let us welcome the new and the different. Let us be curious. The known world will get boring, I promise. <coughs> Excuse me. The unknown, terrifying though it may seem, is both inevitable and interesting. I'm not sure about the rest of you, but I'll take interesting over boring any day. That goes for classes and for the outside world. So maybe I ended up using quotes anyway. That's okay. I was just curious. So my friends and classmates, we did it. We're graduating. We are moving out into the world. 
vast and unknown. We are brave and we are diligent. We can do this too, fear of the unknown notwithstanding. So I will just say it one more time. Be curious. Please, one more round of applause for Eric and for Alexis. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. George Zini. So here we are outside. I was, uh, I don't know, around April, I thought I was all done making snow calls. Um, probably the toughest job I have is to figure out whether it's going to snow or not. And, We'll have to close school, and I have to be right 100% of the time, and the weatherman can only be right 50% of the time. So, um, but uh, Mr. Shaw and I met throughout the day looking at the weather, and I told him it would be okay because I said if we go outside and it rains, it was his call. If we go outside and it doesn't rain, it was my call. So I wasn't worried about it one bit. But, but I'm going to try to keep my remarks uh, briefer than normal, more brief than normal. So it's truly an honor to address and commend the class of 2017. These young men and women have earned the celebration by their dedication, achievements, and diligence. They can leave Ichabod Crane High School today with the knowledge that they have indeed made us all proud. I love to build things, whether it's furniture, additions, uh, houses, um, and there are many parts that we know that go into building a house or furniture or any project like that. Um, so just like there are mil many building blocks that go into building who you are, your character, it's the same thing. You have a lot of building blocks before you really develop who you are. Some of these building blocks are perseverance, honesty, caring, responsibility, integrity, work ethic, and respect. But the one simple message I want to give you this evening is that the most important building block you need to have is a positive attitude. It's the basis for all the other building blocks, for without it, you will not have those other traits. You must have a good attitude. A positive attitude is also the single most important character trait you need for success, whether it's success in your job, success with your relationships, your family, or success with your life in general. Someone once said a bad attitude is like a flat tire. If you don't change it, you'll never go anywhere. So the really great thing about your attitude is that you are in control of it. There are many things that are out of our control, but your attitude is not one of them. You can be the type of person who sees the glass as half empty or sees it as half, as half full, and your decision will determine the quality of your life. I'd like to share with you a quote about attitude from Charles Swindoll. He said, the most significant decision I make each day is my choice of an attitude. When my attitudes are right, there's no barrier too high, no valley too deep, no dream too extreme, and no challenge too great. So choosing the right attitude is in fact the key to your success. As you leave Ichabod Crane High for the last time today, I hope that you'll take with you great friendships, fond memories, and wonderful expectations for the future. Whichever pathway you are pursuing, take with you a great attitude. You will never regret it, and it will open many doors for you as you go through this adventure we call life. So congratulations to the class of 2017, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. We are now on to the awards and scholarships part of our ceremony. Uh, if you've been to, a, to graduation before, uh, we've changed the format, especially for the essence of time today. So we're actually going to combine, um, if a student who receives multiple scholarships and awards, we're going to read all of the awards and scholarships that they earned and call them down one time. 
so we can save time and they don't have to keep going up and down the stairs each time. First recipients, the Emma Kate Breckenridge Purple Star Scholarship presented by the family and friends of Emma Kate Breckenridge, as well as the Geraldine Skimmerhorn Memorial Award pre presented by the family of Geraldine Skimmerhorn goes to Mackenzie Rivka. Citizen Scholarship, presented by Kinderhook Democratic Committee, goes to Alex Perry. Recipient. The Class of 2013 Scholarship, the Jackie Davis Memorial Scholarship presented by his loving family, the Geraldine Skirmerhorn Memorial Award pre presented by the family of Geraldine Skirmerhorn, and the Ryder Citizenship Award presented by Hope Chapel go to Anna Analia Herbst. Human Services Scholarship presented by the Ichabod Crane graduating classes of the 1980s goes to Alexis Graham. <laughs> the next awards go to a recipient. The Class of the 1980s Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane graduating classes of the 1980s. Greg Foster Memorial Scholarship, presented by the family and friends of Greg Foster. The Dr. Luis A. Hakame Scholarship, given in memory of Dr. Hakame by his family. The Northern Columbia County Lions Club Scholarship, presented by the Nor Northern Columbia County Lions Club. National Honor Society Award, the SIG presented by the Signum Laudis Chapter in memory of Dana B. Flax and the Lawrence E. Laux Award, presented by the Friends of Lawrence E. Laux, goes to Marissa O'Dell. Columbia Green Community College Class of the 1980s Criminal Justice Scholarship, presented by the Columbia Green County Community College and the Ichabod Crane Graduating Classes of the 1980s, the Chris Volney Scholarship, presented by the Chris Volney Scholarship Funds, and the Columbia Green Board of Realtors Memorial Award, presented by the Columbia Green Board of Realtors, goes to Riley Werner. Sharon Gaffney Memorial Scholarship, presented by the, the family and friends of Sharon Gaffney, and the Carol H. Spielman Award Memorial Library Award, presented by the Gary Spielman family, goes to Cheyenne Lilly.
the Garden Cl Club of Kinderhook Scholarship, and the Vivian and Samuel Williams Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Williams family slash Will Rock Farms, goes to Scott DeFiglia. The Jerry B. Gould Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane Riders Booster Club, goes to two people, Garrett Kilser and Joseph Warner. Seth Grensey Memorial Scholarship, presented by Charles White, goes to George Cox. <laughs> the Walter and Marie Habeck Scholastic Excellence Scholarship, presented by Walter and Marie Habeck, and the Student Council Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Student Council, goes to Alex Spencieri. The Student Council Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Student Council, the Hudson River Bank and Trust Company Foundation Citizenship Scholarship, presented by the Hudson River Bank and Trust Com Company Foundation, the Team Smith Movement Scholarship, presented by the Team Smith Movement Organization, the Alice and Murray's Giddings Foundation Award, and the Service Above Self Award, presented by the Tri-Village Rotary Club, all go to Meredith Richards. The Hudson River Bank and Trust Co. Foundation Citizenship Scholarship, presented by the Hudson River Bank and Trust Co. Foundation, goes to Dylan Drum. <laughs> the Ichabod Crane Bus Drivers Memorial Scholarship. In, given in memory of Wanda Poucher, Charles Pulver, Judith Edwards, and Helen Dugan, presented by the Ichabod Crane bus drivers, goes to Callie Jennings. The Ichabod Crane Retired Teachers Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane Retired Teachers, is awarded to Ashley Van Alphen. <laughs> the Janet Jackson Memorial Scholarship presented by Girls Athletic Council, the Thomas R. Rowley Memorial Basketball Scholarship, presented by Friends of Thomas Rowley, and the Blue Shield Scholar Award, presented by Blue Shield of Northeastern New York, go to Mary Barkis. The Kinderhook Elks Lodge Teenager of the Year Scholarship, presented by the Kinderhook Elks Lodge, number 2530, goes to Evelyn Sarno.
The Dr. Daniel Langan Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Knights of Columbus, John J. Kern Council, number 7606, is awarded to Bryant Halpin. The Clarence and Stacia M. Lossowitz Whiteman Scholarship, presented by Capital Masonic Charities Corporation, goes to three people, Nigel Kent Gallia, Nicholas Judson, and Maxwell Rexhouse. The Bausch and Lomb Honorary Science Award, presented by the University of Rochester. The E. Joyce Gould Robinson Memorial Award, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Social Studies Department. The Clarence and Stacia M. Lossowitz Whiteman Scholarship, presented by the Capital Masonic Charities Corporation. The Outstanding Senior Award, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Administrators. And the Valedictorian Award, presented by Jostens, goes to Alexis Hoffman. The Thomas R. Rowley Memorial Art Scholarship, presented by the Kinderhook Business and Professional Association, goes to Sorrel Rowley. The Stuyvesant Falls Fire Company Scholarship, presented by the Stuyvesant Falls Fire Company Auxiliary is awarded to Madison Martino. Clarence and Stacia M. Lossowitz Whiteman Scholarship, presented by the Capital Masonic Charities Corporation, and the Taconic Foundation Science Scholarship, presented by the Taconic Foundation, goes to Melon Malinowski. <laughs> Malinowski. I said Malinowski, I'm sorry. I called him Megan Malinowski. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> teacher of Tomorrow Scholarship. <laughs> the Teacher of Tomorrow Scholarship in memory of Frank and Muriel Fusco, presented by Susan Fusco Germain, goes to Jacob Barrett. The Thomas R. Rowley Memorial Arts Scholarship, presented by the Kinderhook Business and Professional Association. The Alan J. Thomas Jr. Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Kinderhook Bank in memory of Alan J. Thomas. And the Team Smith Movement Scholarship, presented by the Team Smith Movement Organization, are awarded to Chloe Chandler. The Town of Stuyvesant Ken Hummel Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Town of Stuyvesant. The Columbia County Association of Town Superintendents Award, presented by the Columbia County Association of Town Superintendents, is awarded to Daniel Quarta. The Art Club Award, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Art Department, is awarded to Isabel Tenye.
The Christian Corazino Memorial Award, presented by the family of Christian Corazino, is awarded to Caleb Ashenbrenner. The Mike DeJoya Memorial Award, presented by the family of Mike DeJoya, is awarded to Jennifer Langley. The Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony Award, presented by the University of Rochester, is awarded to Corey Dozier. Clarence and Stacia M. Lossowitz Whiteman Scholarship, presented by the Capital Masonic Charities Corporation, and the Willard C. Drum Memorial Award, presented by the Columbia County Republican Committee, are awarded to Emily Hallman. The Jerry B. Gould Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane Riders Booster Club. The E. Joyce Gould Robinson Memorial Award, presented by the Ichabod Crane High School Social Studies Department. The Triple C Award, presented by the New York State Attorney General. And the Rider Citizenship Award, presented by Hope Chapel, are awarded to Peter Volkman. The Triple C Award, presented by the New York State Attorney General, is awarded to Carly Jocelyn. Hudson Valley Community College Book Award, presented by Hudson Valley Community College, and the State of New York Office of the Comptroller Award, presented by the New York State Comptroller's Office, are awarded to Nicholas Funk. Ichabod Crane English Department Award, provided by the Ichabod Crane High School English Department, and the Martin Van Buren Award, provided by the Friends of Lindenwald, are awarded to Noel Serena. Ichabod Crane Mathematics Award, provided by the Ichabod Crane High School Math Department, is awarded to Ethan Schneider. <laughs> the Our Community Cares Award, provided by Our Community Cares Incorporated, is presented to Ashley Walsh. The Rensselaer Medal Award, provided by the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and the Salutatorian Award, provided by Jostens, is awarded are awarded to Eric Pappas.
Thomas R. Rowley Memorial Art Scholarship presented by the Kinderhook Business and Professional Association and the Jean Roque Award for Outstanding Achievement in Creative Writing presented by the Ichabod Crane High School English Department are awarded to Emily Goldman. Roberta Rose Memorial Award, presented by the Ichabod Crane Special Education Department, is awarded to Caitlin Jansowitz. The Margaret Tory Plummer Memorial Scholarship, presented by family and friends of Margaret Tory Plummer, and the Sala Latina International Student Organization Award, presented by the Sala Latina International Student Organization of Ichabod Crane High School, are awarded to Lizeth Gomez. Geraldine Skimmerhorn Memorial Award, presented by the family of Geraldine Skimmerhorn, are awarded to Gerard Lopez Gomez and Leah Meredith. The Service Above Self Award, presented by the Tri-Village Rotary Club, the Geraldine Skimmerhorn Memorial Award, presented by the family of Geraldine Skimmerhorn, and the Class of 2017 Scholarship, are awarded to Olivia Cook. The Technology Award, given in memory of shop teacher and principal Lawrence E. Laux, is awarded to John Muller. The Jerry B. Gould Memorial Scholarship, presented by the Ichabod Crane Riders Booster Club and the Colonial Council Principals Award, presented by the Colonial Council Principals, are awarded to Kirsten Sahusky. <laughs> the Colonial Council Principals Award presented by the Colonial Council Principals and the Class of 2017 Scholarship are awarded to Michael Foote. The Dana V. Flax Award, presented by the family and friends of Dana Flax and the Thomas R. Rowley Memorial Arts Scholarship presented by the Kinderhook Business and Professional Association, are awarded to Margaret Gibson. <laughs> the Leverett F. Mansfield Memorial Award, presented by the Friends of Leverett F. Mansfield, is awarded to Christopher McNeil. <laughs> the next scholarships are the Ichabod Crane Teachers Association Scholarship. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Julianne Montrose of the Ichabod Crane Teachers Association who will make the presentations.
I really love these guys. They were the first class I ever worked with. On behalf of the Ichabod Crane Teachers Association, we would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the class of 2017. To bask in the celebration of your many accomplishments is inspiring. This is exactly how a committee of your current and former teachers felt as we reviewed your applications for our scholarship awards. It's a difficult process to choose recipients as each envelope we open revealed academic strength, enthusiastic goals based on genuine passion and excitement for your next chapter. For some of us, they were the best life updates. Seven students were chosen for designated scholarships and at this time we would like to recognize, recognize those individuals. This school is at the heart of our community and there are several graduates who truly represent this. Not only are they ICC students, but they're also the children of ICTA members. We would like to congratulate two graduates of the class of 2017 with the Member Dependent Scholarship. First, Nick Funk. Madison Sacento. In addition, one student has been chosen for the ICTA College Scholarship, given to a student pursuing a four-year degree. This student clearly articulated her goals and given her ambition, will surely succeed. Congratulations, Evelyn Sarno. STEM scholarship was created to promote an extremely valued field. We look forward to further updates of innovative success from this winner, Joseph Warner. With our new Fortitude Scholarship, the ICTA recognizes students who have shared their stories of overcoming significant challenges to radiate motivation and success. Congratulations to our first two ever recipients. First, Meredith Richards. And Miss Chloe Chandler. And lastly, very near and dear to our hearts, the ICTA Educator Scholarship goes to an individual pursuing a career in the field of education. We celebrate this student's ambition and desire to change lives through music education. The ICTA is honored to award the scholarship to Jake Barrett. Thank you and congratulations to you guys and your families. I would like to call down to the podium class officers Jacob Barrett, Olivia Cook, Michael Foote, Alex Fencieri, Lizeth Gomez, and Mary Barkis for the presentation of the senior class gift. Class of 2017 has been fortunate enough to, to have many to have many to have had many officers throughout the last four years. In front of you are six students who have led the class in our final year: President Jake Barrett, Vice President Olivia Cook, Treasurer Michael Foote, Secretary Alex Spencieri, and Representatives at Large Lizeth Gomez and Mary Barkis. As we depart from Ichabod Crane and move on to college, the military, or the workforce, we have decided to leave behind a few gifts for the classes to come. This high school has given us so much. 
and gave us projects for which we pulled all-nighters and homework assignments that literally made us cry. It gave us breakups and pointless fights with friends, but it also gave us memories to last a lifetime. Ichabod gave us four-court volleyball, queso pizza, hallway decorating, and sports games, and so much more. It gave us classes that helped us realize what we wanted to do with the rest of our lives. It gave us friends and memories that will not be forgotten. So, for everything that Ichabod has given us, we give the following gifts. First off, behind us lies the banner of the school. The last banner has hung every year above the graduates. As time moves forward, we, we would like to keep this whole image in mint condition, so we have purchased a new banner. teacher Mrs. Lahut has hit home for many in the Ichabod community. She had not only a kind and warm soul, but also had someone seen her in the hallway, they never would have known the battle she was fighting. In the courtyard of the high school, a tree and a bench will be placed in memory of Mrs. Lahut. We would like to thank Hewitts for the gracious discount. The bench will soon have a plaque that will educate future students on the amazing woman and educator that she was. May her spirit guide us in all of our future endeavors. Last but not least, we are a class that believes in paying forward in hopes of a full circle. The class will be donating money to the incoming kindergarten class, the class of 2031. <laughs> this money will be in, a, in an account that will be open when the class comes into their freshman year of high school. At this time, we would like to congratulate the entire class of 2017 for their commendable efforts. As officers, we couldn't have had a better class to work with. Thank you all for an incredible 13 years in the Iqbal Crane School District, and may, you, and may you find great success in the future. I would like to call back down to the podium Mackenzie Ribka and Jacob Barrett to help with the singing of the alma mater. Please look at your brochures, your handouts, and please turn to page three of your programs to sing along. Thank you. Allie?
Thank you, Jacob McKenzie. I would like I would now like to introduce Board President Mr. Anthony Welcome. Didn't I tell you 13 years ago that you were about to begin the fastest 13 years of your lives? And here they are, 13 years later, when, I, when we had the orientation over at the primary school on that blustery, blustery, cold February evening. I, I'd like to begin by congratulating the parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, and of course the graduates. I'd like to recognize our, our ever-changing Board of Education um, Dan Kahn, I don't know if Dan's here, if you could stand up if you're here. Brendan Colunio, Susan Ramos, Regina Rose, so her, and there's Brendan. John Antelect, Matthew Nelson, Jeffrey Ouellette, Tammy Crawford, and Cheryl Tresker. Thank you. And thank you to our members who are leaving the board, um, Cheryl Tresker and Mike Stead. And we have a student member on the board. She happens to be the valedictorian of the class. Alexis Hoffman got to come every, she got to come every t first Tuesday of the month and listen to us blather on. Thank you, Alexis, for all your time. <laughs> These people put in countless hours for a huge, huge paycheck. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. So please, if you see them all around, please thank them for all their hard work. Um, the world has certainly changed since I graduated from high school, and I'm ashamed to say it. I'm not ashamed to say it. In 1966, we didn't have to worry about terrorists, homegrown or from foreign soil, or diseases that have no cure. Life was certainly different before cell phones and iPads. I'm confident that ed the education you received at Ichabod Crane has prepared you for whatever life throws at you. Whenever I have a question about what I should do in a particular situation, I always go back to an essay written by Robert Fulgrim in 1990. And some of you may have been here before. I've read this before at graduation. All I really need to know about life and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but over there in the sand pile at the primary school. These are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt someone. Wash your hands before you eat flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some, think some, and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. I do that now. Um, when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. The roots go down, the plant goes up, and nobody really knows why, but we are all like that. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even little seeds in the styrofoam cup. They all die, so do we. And then remember Dick and Jane books, the first words you learned, the biggest word of all, look. Everything you need to know is somewhere in there. The golden rule, love, and, the base, and basic sanitation. Ecology and politics and equality and sane living. Take any of those items and extrapolate it into sophisticated adult terms. Apply it to your family life or your work or your government or your world. And it holds true, clear, and firm. Think of what a better world it would be if the whole world had cookies and milk about three o'clock in the afternoon and lay down with our blankies for a nap. Or all governments had basic policies that always put things back where they found them and clean up their own messes. 
And it's still true no matter how old you get. When you go out into the world, it's best to hold hands and stick together. My congratulations to the class of 2017. Thank you, Mr. Welcome. Yesterday, I promised the students that I would keep my speech very short in the essence of time and the weather. Um, so I'm going to keep it very short. And I'll just take a few sentences from what I had written. And that's really to give credit to parents, family, relatives, and everybody who's been a part in raising these, these students' lives. Um, you have a tremendous, there's a tremendous group of students that sit behind me. And I'm very, very proud to be their principal. I know their teachers are proud to have had them in their classrooms. And you should very, be very proud because they represent our community very well. So without further ado, at the moment we've all been waiting for, I'd like to call up Mr. Farley to present the diplomas for your children. Alexis Victoria Hoffman. Eric George Pappas. Caleb Ashenbrenner. Lauren A. Ottenry. James Z. Barker. Jacob Ryan Barrett. Mary R. Barkus. Kaylee Patricia Buick. Raven Moon Bishop. Tyler Andrew Blazik. Taylor Ann Bozik. Neil S. Broderick. David Alexander Bryant. Tamara S. Canelli. Chloe R. Chandler. Olivia M. Cook. Grace Amanda Cornelius.
Jocelyn Leanne Cowan. George R. Cox. Ethan Daniel Alatio Kramer. Soledad Cruz Cruz. Colin A. Curtis. Jaden Marie Dawes. Scott Gary DeFiglio. Michael Stephen Dennis. Jared M. Dijon. Dylan J. Drum. Nicholas B. Ison. Jordan Elise Elliott. Kayla Rochelle Everett. Sarah L. Falconer. Caitlin Clara Farrell. Michael A. Foot. Nicholas John Funk. Nigel Kent Gallia. Gardella. Brandon Walter Gardner. Christopher A. Geddes. Jill Giamarco. Margaret Francis Gibson. Emily Elizabeth Goldman. Seth Gomez. Joseph Robert Grace. Alexis Ann 
Graham. Sarah Ann Gregory. Emily M. Callan. Bryant George Halpin. Analia Elizabeth Hurst. Rachel Christine Pike. Caitlin Elizabeth Jansowitz. Callie Mackenzie Jennings. Carly Ann Jocelyn. Nicholas T. Judson. Liam J. Keating. <laughs> Garrett Stone Kilser. <laughs> Hannah Elise King. Bradley R. Kittle. Casey Elizabeth Klugo. Sarah Nicole Krizar. Daniel James Quarta. Jade Lamont. Mackenzie Ava Lampman. Jennifer N. Langley. <laughs> Alicia May Louster. Toby Ryan Louster. Benjamin A. Lacure. Nicole L. Lewis. Cheyenne M. D. Lilly. Gerard Lopez Gomez. Jorge Loyola.
Samantha Marie Mainville. Megan Kathleen Malinowski. Garrett T. Marcione Benedict. Madison M. Martino. Austin J. McCagg. Aaron Alana McConnell. <laughs> Kayla Skylin McCormick. <laughs> Christopher Damon McNeil. Leah Meredith. John Edward Muller II. Brandon Daniel Murdy. Ryan S. Norton. Marissa Lynn O'Dell. Sarah Rose Page. Maxwell J. Pearson Johnson. Alex Cameron Perry. Taylor R. Peters. Emma Catherine Pinkowski. Harrison M. Padel. Keith B. Poe. <laughs> Michael Vincent Pazzi. Jessica Marie Purcell. <laughs> Meredith Potter Richards.
Donna Marion Rigwood. Sorrel Rowley. Mackenzie Ann Ribka. Madison Emily Susento. Tara Victoria Sager. Evelyn Laura Sarno. <laughs> Maxwell Dewey Sheriff. <laughs> Jacob Sean Skemhorn. <laughs> Ethan Harper Schneider. Nicholas A. Schramm. Lydia E. Segura. Nicholas Scott Shallow. Cassidy M. Smith. Alexander J. Spencier. Cheyenne Faith Stafford Egan. <laughs> Kirsten N. Zahusky. Zachary S. Swear. Yeah. Isabel L. Tenye. Patrick B. Tomchik. <laughs> Fabrice Toussaint. <laughs> Megan Marie Kaczynski. Marianne Therese Tarosi. <laughs> Emily Rose Upright. <laughs> Austin.
Austin R. Valier. <laughs> Ashley B. Van Alpen. Scott Donald Vandenberg. Michael A. Vanaka. Peter F. Volkman. Ashley M. Walsh. Morgan Lee Webb. <laughs> Naomi Weeks. <laughs> Joseph Michael Werner. Riley Page Werner. Anna Colleen White. Hannah Lynn White. Nicole Marie Williams. <laughs> Natalie Elise Zemko. <laughs> Corey M. Dozier. Casey John Rucky. Eric Paul Hagedorn. Mr. Zini, Mr. Welcome, members of the Board of Education, parents and community members, it is my privilege to present to you the Ichabod Crane High School graduating class of 2017. Refreshments will be served in the cafeteria due to the weather. 
um, students know to pick up their diplomas in rooms 402 and 406, and we're going to process that now. Thank you very much, everybody.